will be a purely factual discussion on a topic which I'm sure most people would never even want to bring up, but I think it's vitally important that we do. To me, the dangers of such extreme overrepresentation seem all too obvious. Even if we were to assume that such extreme overrepresentation happened completely by coincidence and there was no collusion at all involved, we should still be extremely concerned that the opinions of this one small ethnic group are being broadcast so far and wide and being represented as if they were majority opinion. Meanwhile, you have the real majority opinion being completely overshadowed, especially on Joe Rogan's podcast, which I think it's fair to say has a reputation for entertaining all different opinions from people of all different backgrounds. In the beginning, the early days, I'd have anybody on. Oh, Holocaust isn't real? Come on! <laughs> Tell me more! <laughs> if so many of his guests, probably about half of them, are all coming from this one insular ethnic group, how can we really hope to get genuinely differing opinions? It's important to note here that Joe Rogan's podcast is the most popular entertainment product in the world. More popular than any TV show, movie, sport thing that's ever going on. It gets tens of millions of views a week. It is absolutely massive and is therefore hugely influential in shaping people's opinions, especially young people's. These are the opinions that tens of millions of them are getting every day. Opinions that they digest and that become their own, that they take with them to the voting booth. The fact that so many of these opinions, about half, are coming from this one tiny insular ethnic group should be extremely concerning to anybody. So it is with this mindset that I urge you to consider this revelation seriously and to avoid the temptation to call foul, which tends to be the knee-jerk reaction of so many these days. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Now, how did I get involved in this thing in the first place? How did I decide to start researching this? Well, as a 20-something-year-old guy, I consider myself a casual fan of Joe Rogan's podcast, like a lot of other 20-something-year-old guys. And it pretty much started off as a casual observation. Hey, there seem to be a lot of Jewish people on this show. Like, a lot. I decided to do some Googling, because surely somebody else had noticed this, and I found zero results. So I decided to launch a proper, full investigation myself. I began simply going through every single one of the 1,864, as of recording, episodes of Joe Rogan's podcast, and began noting the races and types of every single guest on the show. This spreadsheet, by the way, which has all of the data for all of the guests, I will make available, like I said, below in the description. You can check it out yourself. And it's important to note here that in classifying Jewish guests, I only went by instances of confirmed cases. That is, if I could not find a positive confirmation online, either from Wikipedia or from maybe a tweet the person made themselves, that they were Jewish, I did not mark them as such. I said they were white. And this is a really big deal because it is not at all uncommon for Jewish people, for one reason or another, to hide their ethnicity. They'll say things like, yeah, I'm from England, as if to imply they are ethnically English, when in fact they are ethnically from the Middle East. So because of this, that figure of 42% Jewish representation that I'll keep referencing is, if anything, a low estimate. Consider it the very lowest possible estimate. In reality, it's probably much higher. All right, so let's delve now into the data and discuss it a little bit. So after I had collected all this data, I wrote a very simple Python program to basically do some of the counting and some of the analyzing for me. And these are the results I found. In total, as of recording this video, there are 1,864 episodes of the Joe Rogan podcast, not all of which were available on the Spotify website, and I was just going by the ones that were available there. As I said, I went through and classified all of the guests by their race and their type. Their type being what they're most known for, be it stand-up comedian or MMA guy, something like that. And so this is the high-level breakdown of those two categories. You can see here first race, which consists of white, Hispanic, Jewish, black, Asian, Middle Eastern, mixed, and Indian. And you can see also the seven categories of type that I broke up all the guests into. These types include comedian, that means stand-up comedian basically, politician, mixed martial artist, scientist, action adventure, we'll get into exactly what that means later, entertainer, and businessmen. Now let's get into the percentages of Jewish representation on this show, which is kind of the main focus of the video. Let's start off by talking about total Jewish representation. This figure sits at 20.29%. That is, of every guest on the show, 20.29% are Jewish. This is actually quite low, but it's because some of the categories contain no Jews at all, which we will get into. Rogan's podcast also has a lot of repeat guests on it, so if we're only looking at unique guests, there were 856 over all the episodes, 156 of which were Jewish. That puts the Jewish representation in this category at only 18.22%, which is pretty much the lowest figure that you can get 
any way you slice the data. Now let's examine a few of these different types separately because there's a few unique things to point out about each. To start, let's examine what I started off with at the top of this video, the political group. The group itself contains politicians, journalists, and people like podcast hosts when the podcast deals specifically with political issues. Across the history of the podcast, there have been 298 political guests, 124 of whom were Jewish. And this puts the representation, like I said, at about 42%. But keep in mind that this figure is a low estimate, probably a very low estimate. Of course, this was the most concerning group to me for the reasons mentioned above. I don't think you can really have a fair and open society in which this one group just has so much outsized political power. Next, I want to talk about what is actually the largest group on Joe Rogan's podcast, which is the stand-up comedians. He being a stand-up comedian himself, he has a lot of them on his show. There were 759 guests, counting repeats, who were stand-up comedians. And of these, 171 were Jewish, or about 22.5%. This is still an extreme overrepresentation, but it's actually only half of that of the political guests. But that's not a reason to think that this isn't a problem. We all know these days that Stand-up comedians are probably at an all-time high in terms of popularity, and they certainly, when they're doing their sets, do not keep it to just jokes. They tend to get extremely political, I think. The Supreme Court is going in the wrong direction. Women want more rights, more access to abortion. I don't care. Good. I, I hope the Jews did kill Christ. I'd do it again. I'd fucking do it again in a second. So I think it would be absolutely foolish to discount the political impact that stand-up comedians have these days, with so many mainstream opinions actually stemming from a stand-up special at some point. Next, let's talk about the action slash adventure slash athlete category, which I just marked all with an A. This group contains all pro athletes, extreme athletes like the extreme marathon guys, non-MMA fighters, uh, things like that. Funny enough, despite the fact that 210 guests fell into this category, a whopping zero of them were Jewish. Which, funnier still, means that this category is actually closest to being in line with the Jews' 2% population figure. And while I didn't count the MMA-specific shows, there were still, in the main series, 110 MMA guests, also none of whom were Jewish. So this is important to note because not only is that 42% figure already a low-end estimate, it's also skewed by the fact that there's so many bodybuilders and like extreme marathon runners and MMA guys that Rogan has on a show. And let's just say that these aren't stereotypically Jewish things to do. And lastly, let's talk about the scientist category real quick. Uh, about 148 guests on Rogan's show were scientists and 30 of whom were Jewish. This puts their representation in this category at 20.27%. Now this may actually be viewed by a lot of people as a positive because, well, science is usually held in high regard and rightly so. But let's not forget that a lot like stand-up comedy, science has been used a lot these days to promote political agendas. Gender is like sex. It's on a spectrum. So that's pretty much all I want to do in delving into the data itself, just kind of a high-level overview. I don't want to draw too many conclusions off of it, extrapolate too much, like I said at the start. I'll leave that to you. Like I said, look at the data in the description below. What I would like to do, however, is just talk through a few of the questions that this data brought up for me. Primarily, I think most interestingly is, does Rogan know what is happening on his show? Now, while it is always possible that he doesn't know, and I don't want to throw undue blame on the man, I think it's so supremely unlikely that he isn't aware in some way, shape, or form of what's happening that it, it'd be an insult to his intelligence to suggest that he's completely unaware. Native Americans are also about 2% of the U.S. population. Imagine if half of the guests he had on his show were Native Americans. Don't you think someone would point this out at least? Like even not maliciously, just like, hey, isn't this kind of weird? Why does this keep happening? And you would be foolish to assume that all these Native Americans kept coming on his show by accident. It was just circumstance. Obviously something is happening there. It's not even necessarily a bad thing that all these Native Americans are on the show. It's just, it's worth commenting on. I don't know. It's just because of the nature of the thing, that it is Jewish people. And there's such a stigma around calling them out and calling out power structures that they're involved in that Joe just hasn't brought this thing up. He's afraid to. So assuming that Rogan does kind of know what's going on on his show, the show that he's done by himself for over a decade, we have to ask ourselves, does he know and just not think it's a big deal? Is it possible that while Rogan is kind of aware, like, yeah, there's a lot of Jewish people on my show, is it possible that he's just never stopped to consider the deeper ramifications of it, that he really just doesn't think it's a problem? In his mind, it could easily be chalked up to, yeah, it's just Hollywood, of course. Or the other possibility, is he aware of what's going on, but doesn't want to rock the boat? This would actually be a pretty reasonable course of action, given the guaranteed backlash that would come from making that revelation to the world. It would be a way bigger story than any supposed controversy that Rogan has been involved in thus far. And I can really understand and sympathize with not wanting to kick that hornet's nest when the ADL is the 
most well-funded and the most militantly litigious organization in the world. So while we can't be sure what Rogan himself thinks about this, I think it's reasonable to assume that he knows in some way, shape, or form. But hey, Mr. Rogan, if you'd like to have me on your podcast to clear this thing up, we can arrange that. 